God the Father is the King, and so is His Son. The answer to Calvary, you see it in Psalm 109, we crucified our lovely Jesus, but God said to him after the crucifixion and the resurrection, Sit thou at my right hand, but will I make all thine enemies thy footstool. So our lovely Jesus is sitting there at the right hand of God. He knows that all his enemies are going to be his footstool. And before very long, I'm looking to the Lord before we come to the end of this century that our lovely Jesus will be here. Every eye shall see him. They who pierced him. And they'll mourn. He's going to bring in all he's going to bring in all the judgments of the revelation. There'll be few men left after those judgments. Men will be born. The tremendous judgments. But he's going to establish his kingdom of everlasting righteousness. And so here's the promise of a prayer, give the king thy judgments. And thy righteousness under the king's son, that righteous one, is going to be the judge of all the earth. When you read the Psalms, and you read the judgment Psalms, don't say that's David. No, it's our lovely Jesus. The last words of David was, were these. The spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. So it's our Jesus all the way through the Psalms, every Psalm. It's a psalm of Jesus. He was with David. He was with Asaph, the, the seer who foresaw the future. And so they had the early church, they had the psalm. They sang them before any book was translated. Other book, they had the psalms. And they sang those psalms. They're full of the gospel from Genesis to Revelation. From first Psalm to the 150th. So here's this prayer, the last prayer of David. Give the king thy judgments, O God, a righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. You will notice in this psalm as much about the poor. Much about the poor and needy. Our lovely Jesus was poor and needy. As you read the Psalms, remember, it's he that is speaking. And you hear it many times. I am poor and needy. When he was on the earth, he was poor. He was needy. You read the 109th Psalm. Why did such a judgment come to Judas? Because he persecuted that poor and needy one. You hear the prayer of Jesus in that psalm. Do thou for me, O God the Lord, for thy name's sake, and because thy mercy is good, deliver thou me, for I am poor and needy. That poor and needy one was rejected and despised by man. People say, I believe in democracy. I don't. Democracy had a choice there. And they said, Pilate said, which would you have? Barabbas or Jesus? And they said, Barabbas. That's the decision of democracy. And what shall I do with Jesus? Crucify him. That was the verdict of democracy. And so he was crucified, our lovely Jesus. But thank God for that crucifixion. He bore our sins in his body on the tree. We, having died to sin in his death, but live unto God by whose stripes we are healed. Hallelujah, we were healed. Thank God for Calvary. And then, after Calvary, God said, Sit thou at my right hand until I make all thine enemies thy footstool. He's coming back to judge the earth. And he's going to be very kind to the poor and needy. We're all very poor and needy. Let's tell the Lord often, I'm poor and needy. You see it in the 40th Psalm. You see it in the 70th, 70th Psalm. It's our Jesus praying there. 
And we hear him saying, I am poor and needy. It's all come to spiritual poverty. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For well, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It's not it's going to be. It's now. <laughs> Hallelujah. For well, theirs is the kingdom. So let's all learn to be poor and needy at his feet. And he loves the poor and needy. He was poor and needy himself. And he was here. He was so poor he had nowhere to lay his head. He didn't have a bank account. He had no home. Poor and needy. And we're poor and needy. And so as much about his goodness to the poor and the needy ones in this psalm. Let's read on. The mountains shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and shall break the increases of the oppressor. I'm not worried. I don't fret about evildoers. I know my lovely Lord is coming soon. He is the Lord of judgment. The judgment sounds. Our Lord has given all power in heaven and earth. He's going to judge the nation. He's going to dash the wicked nations into pieces. He shall be given the nations for its inheritance, the uttermost parts of the earth for his possession. He shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. There's judgment coming. I say amen to all his judgment. He's going to deal with communism. I don't worry about communism or anything else. I don't want to fit myself about evil doers. I know my Lord is reigning. He's going to have them a little, little running for a while. But he's going to destroy the destroyers. Tremendous judgments are going to be seen on the earth. You're seeing them now. Tremendous judgments. He's the judge of the all of the earth and he'll do right. Praise God. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy and shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations. And then there's this word. Get this word. He shall come down like rain upon the mown grass as showers the port of the earth. About 50 years ago, in the city of Fredonia, a beautiful message came in prophecy. I'm going to quote it to you. I want you to get this. He spoke about this verse and gave his own commentary on these, this simple verse. He should come down as the rain upon the mown grass. Grass that is mown has lost its height and beauty and everything that boasted of Everything that was magnificent is gone. The roots are left. When God's people have lost their self-complacency and boasting and self-satisfaction in what they have attained, in a word, when they have been mowed, they may expect rain. So welcome the morning. And then this this comment, the glory of the latter rain will be greater than the former. There will be no stint in the amount of rain. The crop will be luxuriant and magnificent. So let's ask for rain. And let's pray, send the rain, O oh Lord, and send it everywhere, send it everywhere, send it everywhere. And welcome the mowing as he mows us down, takes away everything that we trusted in. It was just nothing, nothing, nothing. And then when the mighty rain comes, it's going to give a most luxuriant growth that will glorify him. And then the word came to us, be willing into the attitude of ready to be mown, kneel down before him and say, Lord, 
cut out everything out of me that's not pleasing to thee. More me, more me, more me. And you come down upon the long grass. It's going to give a growth that's going to be luxuriant and magnificent and wonderful. Hallelujah. So he shall come down as the rain upon the mown grass and showers that water the earth. Oh, hallelujah, there shall be showers of blessing. I remember being in a meeting years ago when we were reading the 34th of Ezekiel. He shall cause the rain to come down and there shall be showers of blessing. My dear sister, who was mighty in the spirit, she began a song in the spirit of joy. There shall be showers of blessing, I believe God. He's going to send the mighty showers, the mighty showers of blessing. Thank God, thank God. And there's going to be a tremendous crop. I've been encouraged as we've been listening to our brother from Argentina and from our brothers from uh, both Argentina and from Uruguay and from Colombia about what God's doing. And I thought of a word that came in prophecy years ago that there would be shoals of fish running into the nets. As I listen, I don't have a television, but folks next door to us have, and whenever Billy Graham is preaching, they ask us to come in and we listen to Billy Graham and see his program. And I'm so always so encouraged to see the shoals of fish running into the nets. And there Billy's having a great ministry, a wonderful ministry, and it's a lasting ministry. A brother from England tells me of that ministry in England. It's a lasting ministry. He's giving the word and the power of the Holy Ghost. It's much prayer about for, for Billy Graham. There's no one in the world that's prayed for as Billy is being prayed for. People are all back him, backing him, praying. And so there are showers, shows the fish running into the nets. And we can pray and believe to see all over the world shows the fish running into the net. About 12 years ago, the word came through our brother Ivan Spencer in this school, charging us to pray for Argentina every day. Hardly a day since that, those 12 years, but we haven't prayed for Argentina. And now we've enlarged the prayer, we're praying for all the South American lands. And I believe there's going to be shoals of fish running into the nets as a result of great outpourings of the Spirit as he sends the mighty, mighty rain. So pray for Colombia, pray for Argentina, pray for Uruguay. It's amazing, amazing, amazing what God's doing in, in Uruguay. And so that there be shoals of fish running into the nets, a great harvest. A great harvest of souls in the last days. It shall be so. It shall be so. It shall be so. The promise of the 54th of Isaiah. Rejoice, O barren, now that it's not bare. You should have more than the woman that more than the woman that had a husband. Our heavenly Sarah is going to have a greater family than Hagar. Hagar had a big family. You see, all Croatia filled with Hagar's children, and the Jews were saying, Oh, we're children of Abraham. Yes, but who's your mother? Abraham had children by two women one Sarah, and the other was Hagar. Hagar was in bondage with all her children, a lot of Hagar's children. But hallelujah! We're children of the free woman, and we're free, we're free, we're free, we're free, we're free. And we can sing from the depths of our hearts, I am free. I am free. Jesus Christ has paid my debt on Calvary. And the blessed Holy Ghost in my heart is now the host. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. 
I am free. We're all free. We're not Hagar's children, we're children of the heavenly Sarah. And she laughed for joy. And our mouths are filled with laughter and our tongues with singing because we know that our Jesus is going to see the travail of his soul and be satisfied, the promise is so. He's going to have a very large family. And so in these last days, let's be back of the evangelists. Let's pray that you give to the body evangelists should have a mighty ministry and he also we need to pray for teachers I'm so grateful that our precious brother he's, we pray for the laborers to be thrust forth and he knows what kind of laborers to send forth so last camp meeting in California he called two laborers both 73 years of age they couldn't get credentials from any uh, board in, <laughs> in America to be sent out to the field, but money came in and brother and sister banks went to Africa and they're going all over Africa preaching the gospel and the word of God and just teaching to do what uh, our brother, brother Banks is teaching them everywhere he goes. He gets a great company of preachers and he goes through Romans with them. And all the truths of Romans. He's just giving them the simplicity of the gospel in Romans and founding them in the word of God so that they can go back to their various tribes and give them the mighty truths that we have in Romans. You see, there is in Romans we see that when Jesus died, we died with him. We were buried with him. And our old man was crucified with him. The body of sin might be destroyed. Henceforth no longer we serve sin. And now our lovely Christ is living in us. Hallelujah. 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 He's the living man. And I'm not worried about the future or anything of, at all because my lovely Jesus is... Nothing can ever separate us from his love. He's with us, no condemnation. He bought it all at Calvary. And thank God for all the blessedness we see in Romans 8. Let's learn to read. I'm so glad that the school, they're learning the 6th of Romans to have that off by heart and the 8th of Romans to recite that off by heart. No condemnation. Jesus bought it all. No separation from his love. No, nothing shall separate us from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a gospel. And he just loves us and loves us and loves us and he's going to make every one of us a lover. Loving with all our hearts. I shall never forget that prophecy given here in Elam a few years ago by a prophet from Halifax who said that God fill our hearts with his own love. There never be any resentment in our hearts towards any. But his love, his love, his love would just so control us. And that's such a wonderful word that you gives us. To be built up in this most holy faith, to be praying in the Holy Ghost and keep yourselves in the love of Christ looking for his mercy. And so, let's look to the Lord to make every one of us a great lover, loving him with all our hearts and souls and mind and strength, loving our neighbors. Love is the fulfilling of the Lord. And so, everyone will leave this camp meeting, I believe, filled, filled, and overflowing with the love of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. You see, people like fruit. And as we abide in Christ, and Christ abides in us, we shall bring forth much fruit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. And then we read in Jude that he's going to keep us from falling, keep us from stumbling. 
and present us faultless, faultless, faultless before the throne with exceeding joy. What a joy it will be for him to present us to Jesus, to present them to his Father. Faultless, faultless, faultless. With exceeding joy. I love my Jesus. I want him to have exceeding joy, don't you? As he presents you and me faultless. 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 He's able to keep us from stumbling all the way. You take us into the what all that is written in the first epistle of John. Make us free from sin. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Because we're not under the law, but we're under grace. And through his grace should hate sin the Lord will keep us from sin and thank God as we confess our sin he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and as we confess and walk in the light the blood of Jesus Christ God's son cleanses us from all sin hallelujah 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 for the preciousness and the power of the blood cleansing from all sin. I'm not worried about the sin question. Why, Jesus settled it. There's no separation from his love. And he's going to pour and pour and pour and pour his own love into us. And we should just be rivers of love flowing out from us all the time, day and night. I go down to the river. I went down to the river Mississippi often when I was in New Orleans. I go down early in the morning and see that river flowing when the cold following morning. And I'd see the river flowing, go down at night time, the river flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing and flowing. And so from within us shall flow rivers of living water day and night bringing death into the whole earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So keep drinking, drinking, drinking of the fountain. For thee is the fountain of life. Our lovely Jesus is the fountain of life. As we come to that river, spoken of so many times in the word of God, let's drink and drink. Jesus, on that last day of the feast, he shouted with a loud voice, if any man thirst, Let's ask the Lord for the big thirst. Let him come unto me. He was the rock that was smitten. As we believe in him, as we trust in him, from within us shall flow rivers of living water, day and night. Ceaseless rivers. So let's believe in him. Let's trust in him. Let's look to him as we drink continually to just... Let the continuous flow of those rivers day and night. And there's something very wonderful here. In his days shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace as long as the moon endureth. He, our lovely Jesus, shall have dominion also from sea to sea and from the river, that's the river you pray, he's under the ends of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our king reigning and ourselves reigning with him. This is an eternal truth. And so let's praise him for the privilege of being co-workers with him, heirs of Christ and joint heirs with him. Hallelujah. To reign with him eternally. Hallelujah. So he's training us. He's teaching us day by day so that we can become his trained ones, his judges, his kings and priests, and to our God throughout eternity, he shall reign from sea to sea, and from the river Euphrates under the ends of the earth, our king reigning. That's the promise of Gabriel to Virgin Mary, that he should bring forth a son, his name will be Jesus. He should have the throne of his father David. He shall reign forever and ever. Time is passing. Time is only a short little episode in the midst of the millions and millions and billions and billions and billions and billions and billions of years of eternity. Seven days. 
We're coming to the end of the sixth day. My daddy used to see me as a young fellow poring over the books of prophecy. And he'd say, yes, son. As a young man, I was looking forward to the coming of the Lord. He used to go and hear all the comings. And he showed plainly that the Lord must be here soon. Napoleon was the Antichrist. And we thought he was coming very soon. But he said, I believe the Lord's got it all timed. At the end of this century, it'll be the end of the six days. He'll be here to bring in his everlasting peace, bring in a thousand years of peace. The close of that year, he's going to just let the devil be set free for a short while, and he's going to take all his own. But we shall reign and live with him for years, and millions and millions and millions and millions of years reigning with him. Oh, what a glorious prospect. He shall reign. He shall reign. He shall reign from the river unto the ends of the earth, and his reign shall be an eternal reign. And we shall reign with him. Kings and priests with him. The kingdom of priests. And we can say now with John, unto him that loveth us, and hath loosed us from our sins in his own blood, Hallelujah for the blood. Hallelujah for the blood. Hallelujah for the blood. And to him that loveth us, present tense, he that loveth us and has loosed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests, the kingdom of priests. Oh, unto him, unto him, unto him, unto him, be glory and dominion forever. What a privilege it is to be his. To know that we're priests and kings, he's made us such. The kingdom of priests to reign with him throughout the millions of years of eternity and to sing of his praises throughout those millions of years and to make known his faithfulness to all generations. You see in Revelation, the last chapter, God's going to deal with the wicked nations the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Many nations are putting him out of their economy. Russia, that Russian nation will be turned into hell. China, that nation will be turned into hell. India's past becoming such will be turned into hell. And thank God he's got a remnant in every one of these countries. And out of every tongue and nation and people that shall become forth those who shall praise and glorify our God throughout eternity. He won't be in vain. His, his sacrifice at Calvary was not in vain. We shall see some of every nation there. But what a ministry we've got to make known his faithfulness. The nations that are saved. We read in Revelation 22, I think it is, or 21 shall walk in the light of that heavenly city. So there will be nations that will be saved. I believe that America is going to be saved. It's going to be judgment on America. But I believe that's going to be one of the saved nations. They shall walk in the light of its presence for a year, out through the millions of years. And there will be nations, children born, and grandchildren born, and great-grandchildren be born, and we've got a job to make known his faithfulness to them. Say, that's a big task. The seeing of his mercies forever and to make known his faithfulness to all generations. Thank God. In his days shall the righteous flourish and abundance of peace as long as the moon endureth. No more wars. He maketh wars to cease unto the ends of the earth. He tells us not to be worrying about that. To be still. Know that he's God. He brings us into stillness and quietness. He spoke to us one day, perhaps I'll give it before the end of this convention. The prophecy he gave us as we would learn to be still, quiet in his presence, to get rested. Won't be worried about the things of earth. 
But he did us, give us such a confidence in him. He'd take us right through the veil into his presence. And there from the mercy seat it will be his delight to share with us all that he has and all that he is. Hallelujah. What a privilege to learn to be still and quiet before him, meditate in him, the night watches. And what a joy he'll pour into our hearts as we become delighted with the certainties of the scriptures. The triumph of the wicked is but for a moment. I'm not worried about the triumph of the wicked. Communists may get control of the various countries of the earth. Rome may just do her worst. I'm not worried about Rome. Her day is coming. Ten communist rulers will destroy that old harlot. It should be destroyed forever and ever. Then the communists will be themselves destroyed. The Lord is going to bring in everlasting peace. I'm not worried about the future. I know my lovely Jesus reigns. And so, we'll be rested and sure. Read those last few chapters of the Psalms before the 100th Psalm. We read again and again, the Lord reigneth, the Lord reigneth, the Lord reigneth, and none of those places where it says he reigns, he says in, in, in some versions, the Lord reigneth from the tree. From Calvary. Hallelujah, that's the throne. He reigns. He shall reign eternally. Hallelujah. So I'm on, I'm, we're on the winning side. <laughs> he shall reign. The triumph of the wicked is but for a moment. You see, we've seen in this century some terrible things. First, World War I. Kaiser thought he was going to be king over the, all the earth. A one that came to him from a, one of his subjects who had been to Catholic Convention, she was telling him with such joy. She learned for the first time that Jesus was coming soon, so she told him, the Kaiser, he's coming soon now, Jesus is coming soon. And he was troubled. He says, that, that would interfere with all my plans. He built his peace palace right on the summit of the Mount of Olives. And then one day, God sent an earthquake. There was a great storm came. It had a great picture of the Kaiser. who was going to be king over all the earth. And it destroyed that picture of the Kaiser. He went triumphantly into Jerusalem. He didn't go meek and lowly on, a, on a, an ass. He went in triumphant on a big charger and all his officers after him. But war, 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 war came and he didn't win. He didn't become king over the, all the earth. Then the same spirit got into Hitler. He was going to see Germany become the principal nation on the earth for the next thousand years they'd be reigning. But did that, did that happen? No. His ministry was a ministry of hate. He said, you must hate, you must hate, you must hate. Does hatred win? No, sorry, no, sorry. He shot himself. And he saw all was gone. What a judgment's coming to Hitler. He destroyed six million Jews. What a judgment to come to him. There must have been any. World War, 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 war three is on the horizon. The Chinese are going to try and get the supremacy. They have an army of three millions. They expect to invade Canada and the United States. They have their atomic weapons. They'll destroy most of the cities in the United States. 
We don't have to be troubled. Let's believe the promises and get to a place of shelter. I think he'll have his shelters. He'll have his cities of refuge, I believe. Elam is going to be a city of refuge. I believe it's Shalom and Canada is going to be a city of, a city of refuge. So, I'm not worried. He'll have his preserved ones. He'll keep us. But all the while we've got the scriptures and we know the triumph at the end. The triumph of the wicked is but for a moment. The triumph of our Christ is for eternity and eternity. He shall reign forever and ever. How's the time going? We'll throw us with this. We'll come back to that wonderful word at the end of this psalm. This wonderful, wonderful prayer and praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things, and blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Let's all stand and make this our prayer. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. The 19th verse of the 72nd Psalm, let's all quote it, and blessed be his glorious name forever. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. It shall be so, it shall be so, it shall be so. Amen means it shall be so. It shall be so, it shall be so. The whole earth is going to be filled with his glory. Filled throughout all eternity with the glory of our God. So let's make it again our prayer. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. That's all said. Let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. He has said, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Great is our God and great is to be praised. The whole earth shall be filled with his glory forever and ever. So don't let's be a worrying people, let's be a praising people. We know God has spoken. God has spoken. God has spoken. And the old whole earth shall be filled with his glory. He shall reign forever and forever. And what a joy to know that we shall have the joy of reigning with him throughout eternity. Amen. Amen.